Shane from Club Safari, guys. Um, fucking hell, all the motorbikes here. What the hell is going on? Uh, this is your girlfriend's, right? Yeah. Oh, show it for us. Kawasaki, so she can ride this bike, huh? And this is mine here. Morning, morning. Um, it's early mo it's, uh, what time is it? About 7 or 8 now, huh? Yeah. Oh no, it's after 8. Okay, anyway, uh, thank you. Let me turn this around. Okay, what is your name? Jason. Okay, this is Jason. What do you, what do, you do here at Safari, Jason? I'm a service crew. You are the chef? Yeah. You are the cook? <laughs> okay. Okay, thanks. Uh, see you later. So there goes Jason up to the kitchen. Uh, we gotta buy some ingredients and stuff. Oh, beautiful morning. The sun is shining and sky is beautiful blue. Trees are green. Oh, I'm, I'm waxing lyrical, poetical here. The students are over there in, uh, in the college. That's the college there, by the way. So there is a bunch of students. Uh, this is uh, State University. If you ever want to study in the Philippines, I recommend this a university like this. It's very affordable. And you know, the study is studied. It depends on you. Okay, let me turn this. Somebody is still constructing here next to us. It's going to be a little internet or restaurant or whatever, internet shop. And uh, so yeah, the things are happening here. So it's morning in uh, Club Safari. So yesterday, uh, hi guys, morning, morning, morning. I just finished my little exercise, not for the day, but for right now. Uh, going upstairs again. Yesterday we were talking about retirement in the Philippines, you know, and I got a lot of comments, uh, mostly very positive. People seem to like the idea of retiring with a lower cost of living than they are spending right now wherever they are. Some, uh, I got a few very negative comments, like people get really fucking angry, you know. Oh, you're talking shit, I want to take your head off, I want to give you another blue eye or black eye, blah, blah, blah. Fuck off, okay, talk, come and talk your shit here, okay, fuck you. Oh shit, I shouldn't say fuck you, I, prom I promised uh, my Turkish friend, sorry there. I'm, I'm, not, I'm gonna stop swearing, <laughs> so he's, he is right, I should stop swearing, so so guys, if you hear me swear, then remind me, Frank, stop swearing, <laughs> I'm only gonna swear when I'm really angry, like when people are threatening to give me a black eye or something, you know, that, that pisses me off, because, you know, we are, <laughs> you, you, you know what I mean anyway, so okay. Retiring here in the Philippines, so many, so these people who get angry at me are the ones who are spending a ton of money. A ton of money. They're living in Subic, in Manila, in Angeles City, in Cebu, and so on and so on. Now, in all of these places, you can also live a cheap, cheaper, cheaper lifestyle, but things there are much more expensive than in our area, obviously. I mean, the fruit. I remember when I was in Cebu a few months ago, the, I was shocked. Fruit, uh, stuff, it's like three times, three times the price that we are paying here. Just a small example, okay? If you go in the bar there, the beers can go up to 100 pesos easily. Um, everything is much more expensive, okay? Double, sometimes coming up to treble, treble. So, you know, you have to think about it. And then if you live in a big city like that, Manila, Cebu, Angeles, what, what is there, what, what you have there is the pollution. The pollution, right? So, so once you got all this pollution, uh, it's like um, uh, it's got the effect of, of heating up the whole. The whole city becomes like an oven because the pollution forms a bowl over the city, and then the heat just builds up, it builds up, builds up, and then it's it's, it's a it, it's a you, you live in a gigantic oven, oven. Basically, Manila and Cebu, they're ovens. They're steaming, steaming hot. You know. People call me from Manila, Filipinos. Oh, we want to come and stay in your place. You know, da, da, da. they book a room here. The first question they ask me is, do you have aircon? And I'm, I'm, I'm always very surprised, aircon? Why? Why, 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 why do I need aircon? It's, I mean, here yeah, the weather is so cool. If I turn on that fan, I got a fan there on the ceiling. Uh, I got fans here, all right. Um, I got fans, but I but I, I rarely use. I do turn them on later on. You know, when people are eating or whatever, they they they, they turn. They get a little bit hot, right? But uh, it's not. You don't need any goddamn aircon here at all. 
Okay, it's not necessary. I, I promise you. At, in the evening, you're going to be covering your body. You're going to be. In the evening, you're going to be like covering up to your neck. You're going to be. My my girlfriend, she sleeps under a thick cover, like thick. I'm seriously like like thick as this, like 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 it's winter. And all and the, uh, I just some I turn on the fan on at its lowest speed. That's all my feet. I want to keep my feet and legs. I don't know why I'm weird in that. I don't want any wind in my face. So I keep my... Um... So anyway, uh, um, you do not need aircon here. No, no, no. You do not need... I went down to a local little uh, resort there by the sea and I bumped into a foreigner sitting there outside his room and he was sweating, you know, he was perspiring, you know, and he was, oh, oh, oh. he was breathing like a dog, you know, like a dog that swallowed some poison. And I, I was astonished. I was looking at this guy and I was thinking, what's wrong? And he's like, oh, it's so hot. Oh my God, I cannot survive. Oh my God. And, and, and in his room, you could hear the air going, oh, running, running. And he's like, oh, and, he's, and then after about, we, t we talked for like five minutes and he said, oh, excuse me, I got to get back in the room. Oh, you know, the, ah. I mean, I cannot stand the air conditioning. I cannot stand it. It's, it's, you know, most of the air conditioners are dirty. They're old. They're smelly. The, st air, the air coming out is fucking stinking and poisonous. Dudes, stay away from the air con. Luckily, thank God. I'm not religious, but thank God. Here we, we do not need air con at all. Uh, the evenings are really nice and cool, and it often gets quite cool. You know, when I go on my motorbike in the evening, sometimes I have to wear a jacket, you know, and I love it because I don't like aircon. And that is going to be one of your biggest single expenses if you live in Manila, Cebu, or all these places because you, you're gonna, you cannot live there without aircon. It's just stinking hot, and your aircon running all day long is going to be, you're going to have a big bill. I'm telling you right now, big fucking bill. Anyway, um, so that is something you can consider. Mmm, yummy. I still haven't opened this bottle. Louis Royer, French Cognac, uh, Medaille d'Or. I want to open this at some point. And of course, Mar Marula is the best, man, from Africa. Okay, so... So it, it depends a lot where you want to retire. You know, you have to understand that... Um, you have to understand that your, your place that you choose is going to make a huge difference. You know, where you're going to, where you're going to, where you're going to retire to. Um, okay. So, for all these goddamn haters out there, guys, you know, I was in Hong Kong a few, uh, last year, and uh, I had a few drinks there in uh, Wan Chai, and then I met this American guy outside the bar, I think it was the Old China Hand, I don't know, oh, the Old China Hand is gone, it's closed down. People can't afford their rents in Hong Kong anymore. It's insane, the cost of living. In fucking insane in Hong Kong. But anyway, um, and in, in, if you come here to the big cities in, in, in Philippines, it's going the same way, it's skyrocketing, like this. Um, and he was telling me that he's studying, he studied cost. He, he, he took a loan of 100,000 US dollars. One for, a, I think for a two year course, MBA, MBA, $100,000 US, now, it beats me, if you show that level of fucking total unintelligence, total non, not, not an inkling of intelligence, zero, n nil, nada, mayo, how, how are you going to be able to run a business? Why do you want to pay 100000 US dollar for, for an MBA? Go and buy the book. Uh, the, there's a book, M, the MBA book or something. I, I, I forgot now. And you, you, it costs you 20 Hong Kong dollars. You read that. And if you don't understand, you read it again and again and again. After, after you read it 20 times, it's going to be much better than your two-year MBA. And you, you, can, you can buy... How many books can you buy? I mean, what's going on with these people? And then, and I and I started laughing at this guy, right? I laughed in his face, and he he, he got really angry. And then, uh, you know what happened? He sat down on the pavement outside the bar, and he started crying, crying. 
because I was laughing at him. I was like, <laughs> when are you going to pay off your study debt, your $100,000? How are you going to pay it off and when? I told him, dude, you're going to work your whole life until you're retired at 75 or 80. And you're not going to pay off your 100,000 US dollar. And he was like, oh, what? And then, now, the, the equivalent of, of this dude is, the, is are those guys that you see there in Manila, in uh, all over Manila, all over Angeles, all over Cebu and um, Subic and all these places, right? They, when you arrive in the Philippines, because of the conversion rate, you know, one US dollar is 50 pesos, one euro is 60 pesos or whatever, I don't even know, one pound, you know, blah, blah, blah. Wow, you feel suddenly very rich, right? Because you have a thousand US dollar, it's nothing in the US. You, couldn't, you could hardly survive for one week, right? Now you cash that into pesos, it's 50,000 pesos. 50,000 pesos, if you know what you're doing, you can live for two to three months quite comfortably, right? Now, compare that to the US where you could live maybe one week or maybe two weeks max. And then you're on the street in a, car, in a box of you know, in a, in a carton box and begging, oh, you know, can I wash your car window or some bullshit, right? So, of course, you, you are like a $1,000 millionaire all, all of a sudden when you arrive here in the, in the Philippines, okay? So this goes straight to your head. If you, if you don't have the, the right kind of IQ or the right attitude or the right insight, then suddenly you're, um, you know, you're like a 1,000, I'm a $1,000 millionaire and I'm going to live like a fucking millionaire, right? And you will be able to live like a millionaire for about a month on your, on your $1,000 and then boom, game is over. Then you got, then you, then you, I've seen foreigners on the streets here and you see them regularly, okay? So you got to be wise, okay? You know, when, if you pretend that you're a rich dude, I don't even pretend. I'm, I don't have to pretend, okay? I'm not fucking rich in any way. I don't want to be rich. Um, I just want to live a simple lifestyle within my means, within my means, okay? Now some people will say, oh, it's within my means to spend 2,000, 5,000, 10,000 US dollar a, a month. Okay, peace, dude, you, you go ahead. I hope for your sake that you're gonna, you know, a, uh, six months from now, a year from now, two years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, I hope you're, you still have enough money, like Buddha, Buddha, Buddha said, um, the um, drip by drip, drop by drop, the bucket will fill up, but drip, drop by drop, the bucket can empty, okay? So, either way, it cuts two ways, okay? If you have an asset, if you have money, there is no fucking reason for you to just splurge it, waste it, throw it away, whatever. Instead of, instead of, Spending like like I told you like this dude that I read about 120,000 pesos for renting a big house Quank quank quank. Hey, look at me. I live in a fucking house with six bedrooms and five bathrooms and fucking three garages and a huge uh, Garden and da -da 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 -da. Hey, look at me. Look at me, you know fucking wanker take that money and open a school Open whatever open a business that do something useful with your money, okay? Something that you can actually even help other people instead of just fucking throwing it down a greedy landlord's fucking throat, okay? Greedy landlords you find all over the world. Just go to Hong Kong, go to China, go to the US. Greedy fuckers, okay? Sorry, there I swear again, but when I talk, to, uh, when I talk about landlords in China and Hong Kong, oh my God, these people are savages, okay? And I would never ever support a greedy landlord. They are the fucking worst scum in the universe. So take your money and be wise, be clever, do something with it, make it work. Instead of just trying to show off, oh, look at my space, look at my place, yeah, I'm a macho dude, you know, I'm a fucking rich dude. Da, 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 da. Nobody gives a shit, okay? Nobody cares. You impress people, you, you, you spend your time and money to impress people who don't, they don't care. It's the same with these people buying their Apple phones and their whatever, you know, driving their fucking Jeeps and shit. Nobody cares. 
I, I bought this, my nice little motorbike from an American expat in, uh, in Panglao for 15,000 pesos, uh, 300 US dollar. He gave me a discount. I think I end up, okay, let's just say 300 US dollar. And the thing goes great. It looks great. It goes great. It's 12 years old or 15 years old. Great bike. I don't want these new bikes that you pay 10 times the price. And uh, talking about motorbikes, transport here in the Philippines, buy yourself a little bike. Okay, as a business, I am strongly considering getting a, a, a four-wheel vehicle because, you know, I, I can go and pick up customer guests at the airport in Butuan, which is two or three hours away. I can go shopping in Davao because I do need sometimes ingredients. The problem of, the, the main problem or drawback, drawback that you have living here in the in an idyllic jungle, green, clean and serene, is that uh, there is nothing here that you would really want or, or that you crave for. You know, we have cravings. I crave good coffee. I can get my vodka here, so if I go to San Francisco, San Francisco, yes, it's 30 minutes down the road. I'm in San Francisco on my motorbike. Uh, I can get my vodka there, but there's no good coffee. Can you believe it? Actually, we do have a coffee plantation here at the back. If I, if I ride another on my bike again, I think it's 20 to, let's say 30 minutes. I get to a coffee, the coffee there is really good. Okay, but anyway, cheese, bread, you know, these kind of things that we take as very common. We eat nothing, nothing here. Uh, you can you have to bake your own bread or you have to go down to, uh, to the big city. I mean, the big city, I mean Davao. The wall, which is, if you have your own car, four to five hours to buy bread and cheese and stuff like that, okay? So, okay, there is some drawbacks, okay? But the, uh, the pros, the pros and the cons, the pros are you can have fresh food every day. If you can get off your diet of uh, processed, very unhealthy foods that are going to kill you, are going to sicken you and kill you. So, the, the, the second question people ask me, uh, is healthcare, 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 healthcare. What the hell is going on with the people there in where we, in, in the West? Everybody has got this phobia about healthcare. Oh, do you have healthcare there? What is the hospitals like? Are you? What the hell is going on, dudes? Anyway, the good news is that I've been here in our little clinic in this little town, Takbina, several times now. Um, it, it's free. Seriously, it's free. Um, very professional, very helpful. I uh, I went there for several different reasons. I, 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 I walked over a wooden bridge, little wooden bridge. One day the bridge collapsed and I I fell into a into the ditch and then I got a rusty nail stabbed me, in, uh, you know, stabbed into me and stuff like that. But uh, if you go, like I said, San Francisco, there are big hospitals there. I think you can buy medical insurance here in the Philippines for is, is it is it three hundred or three. Three to four hundred US dollar a year, I think, is it? I don't know. I, I just try and stay away from doctors. My best advice is don't go to doctors. My little girlfriend now, she has endless, endless problems with her teeth, okay? Every month she's complaining, oh, my tooth, my tooth, my tooth. At first it was one, then she went to the dentist. The next time she went back, the dentist found another one. Oh, that's, no, there are two. Then it's, they went back and there's another, no, we have three bad teeth. And probably next time she goes back, she's gonna have five bad teeth. So what was the original problem was she went to see the dentist the first time. Stay away from doctors and dentists. I went to visit the dentist once in my life. The, that was, well, I, because I took my ex-girlfriend. She was another little freak about their teeth and about bullshit and uh, that, uh, that was in China, Shenzhen, and then uh, I was waiting for her, you know, I was translating, Yai, Yai is a dentist in Chinese, so I was waiting for her, you know, to get the treatment, and then uh, I was telling the dentist, hey, well, may I can go Yai, this is the woman like you the Yai, uh, then he said, oh, really, it's the first time you've never been dentist, yeah, and he's like, okay, okay, sit down here, I really want to see your teeth. Because I think at that point I was like 45 years old or 44, never been a dentist. So he was very interested and he said, it's free, don't worry, I just want to see, you know. And I'm not saying I have good teeth, 
but I can fucking bite like a lion. And then you're like, wow, your teeth is your teeth is perfect. There's nothing wrong with them, and it's much better than your girlfriend's, who goes religiously to the dentist. So what's the point here, guys? If you want to be healthy, stay away from hospitals and doctors. That's where you pick up a lot of your diseases, serious diseases. If you're gonna die, you're gonna probably die in a hospital from a disease that you pick up there in the hospital, okay? That is, that is fucking true. Stay away from doctors as far as you can. Okay, the broken bones, stab wounds, I understand that, okay, bullets. You have to go and see a doctor, I, 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 then you definitely have to go. But otherwise, stay away. Um, the, so anyway, the hospitals are here, the doctors are very good, they speak perfect English, they're very, uh, uh, very nice people from my experience, the couple times I went there. Dentists don't ask me, I don't, go, I don't like dentists. Um, but they are here in numbers, and, and, and I know the costs are, apparently people told me, ridiculously cheap compared to where we, uh, else you may be, and the quality is good. So, uh, about business, you know, I'm, I hate the red tape, you know, I don't like people, I don't like, um, I don't like dealing with red tape documents, fucking, uh, okay, there I go again, sorry, but I really hate, you know, fill in this form, da 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 I, I don't like it, I don't want it, my girlfriend takes care of all of that st stuff, okay, she does it, she likes, she's smiling, uh, she can deal with these people, you know, and uh, she, takes, she, she deals with all the licenses, the, you know, the BIR, as you can see there on the wall, let me turn this around, let me try and zoom in there. Oh, that's our, all these different business licenses and 